Hey everyone, welcome to Mini Monday PD on the virtual classroom. My name is Kimberly Ring and I'm your host. I'm a virtual teacher and hoping to, you know, spread some information and and some expertise in this field to others who might be needing it. Um, so our new series is going over this book by Marzano, The New Art and Science of Teaching. Marzano is my idol. Um, if you have a connection to him, I would love to meet him. I'd love to talk to him um, and collaborate with him on virtual education. So yeah, I would love that. <laughs> um, anywho, uh, we're going to be working through his book. You definitely should have the book, uh, whether you care about this PD or not. Uh, there is an affiliate link. I am an Amazon affiliate. I, I don't push just anything out to you, obviously, because I could push anything that they sell out to you, but I'm choosing to push out the things that I really believe in um, and will be talking about. Know that I do get a small percentage back at no additional cost to you, but if you're really against that and still want the book, um, you can go find it on Amazon. It's called The New Art and Science of Teaching by Robert J. Marzano. So, anywho, it just goes to, if you do use that affiliate link, know that it just goes to help pay for, like, the podcast and everything like that. Because, as you know, there's no ads on there. So, I don't, I'm not getting rich off of anything. So, um, so raise your hand if you've ever seen a Marzano scale on, like, Pinterest. I'm not talking about that today. But the first chapter does talk about providing and communicating clear learning goals. And thinking about if I was writing this book, let's say that you're writing a book on teaching strategies, knowing full well that teachers don't have time to read, but might make time to read the first chapter at some point. Um, I would probably make that chapter the most important one, right? Though if I'm, if I'm only pushing out one thing and they're gonna read only one part of it, that would probably be it, right? The beginning. So the first element is providing scales and rubrics. And within that element, there is five or six strategies. And we're just going to talk about a couple of them. That's why I say buy the book, because this is mini Monday PD and not large Monday PD. And my mentality with this is that I'm going to be sharing those things that just blew my mind, things that I might have been doing but did it wrong, or maybe helped me see it in a different way and enhanced it. Or maybe there's things that I haven't been doing because I thought they could only be done in a traditional classroom and I, through reading this I realized that I could do it in a virtual classroom. All of it's going to have a virtual classroom twist to it. But those are the things I'm going to be sharing. But I, that's why I say you should also be reading this book with me. So, alright, so with that in mind, let me grab my notes because um, I don't like to just talk. I like to have things in front of me. So the first uh, one of the strategies that we're going to be talking about is providing scales and rubrics. Um, and like I said, I've used the scales and rubrics like, um, not the rubrics, but I've seen the Marzano scales. I even used one in my interview uh, because my school is uses the Marzano evaluation uh, to evaluate teachers. So I'm very familiar with that. So even during my, uh, my interview where I had to teach a little mini lesson, I used one of the Marzano scales, which had like, I understand this and I can do this on my own, that type of thing. It was very general, wasn't uh, lesson specific. I've also, in almost every single one of my lessons, have used like the student language uh, versus adult language of a, of a standard. But what we're going to be talking about today, it puts two, both of those together. And so... The first uh, one is uh, clear articulating these learning goals. And then he talks about using them. And so we'll talk about that here in a minute. But I wanted to show you my most, after reading this, this is what I came up with. So this is my learning target for uh, my lesson on Tuesday, April, sorry, April 28th. Um, what I love is that this is geared towards what I'm teaching. Now, not every lesson is uh, the 3.0, which is students can retell the main idea and relevant supporting details using um, using their own words to paraphrase a text. But everything that I'm teaching is working towards this. So this is my unit uh, target skill, but my lessons might not be 
like directly that, but it does align with it. So I'm going to have this and I'll talk about how I use this throughout the lessons here in a moment, but just know that it, it doesn't have to be specific for that lesson, but it should be specific to what your, your end goal is. Okay. So, um, so if you're having a students do like a presentation and they need to do capital letters and all that fun stuff and, um, but in their presentation, they're writing a summary where they have to paraphrase this information. Like this is still a relevant and overall goal and everything leading up to that is still aligned to this goal. Now, to those who are watching this, you, you can see the learning target. To those who are listening to this on the podcast, you cannot. So let me just take a second and uh, kind of give an overview of what we're looking at to those who are watching this. So like the it's a scale and um, there's a top one is 4.0 and the bottom is zero. So the 4.0 is like the top, um, but it's not the learning target. So three is always the learning target. What you, at the end of the unit, this is where you want at least your students to be. But the 4.0 gives that permission and opportunity to go above and beyond. So it can stay the same, the 4.0 can. So students will make inferences and applications beyond what was taught. Uh, so that doesn't put a ceiling on it. It's not anything, something specific. It just lets your kids have know that there is an opportunity to go and be above and beyond. It's encouraged to go above and beyond. You're challenging to go them above and beyond, but you're not saying how. They kind of have to figure that out, which is really what a 4.0 is, right? And then the zero is even with help, the students demonstrate no understanding or skill. And then the 1.0 can say the same as well, which is with help, the students has partial success on 2.0 content and score three uh, content. So the 3.0, and, and if you did put like a 3.5 um, and anything in between uh, should change. And it should be scaffolding. So like two should be like the lowest point of your, of your three. So like mine is students will identify main idea and some details uh, to begin paraphrasing with guidance. They need some guidance. They need some help and they can identify some details. And then uh, 2.5 is students can identify main idea and some relevant details to begin paraphrasing with guidance. So. And I think I didn't copyright. So I think that should be, no, it is. Okay. So, uh, the 2.0 had some details, but the difference with the 2.5 was some relevant details, not just any details. Um, so those are the in-between ones. Uh, and so with that is now using it. So I made this beautiful, uh, scale. And do I just now like check that mark off? It's on my lesson. I'll get a good portion on that uh, of my evaluation. No, you should be using this. So let me turn my notes. So Marzano says that we should be using this at, definitely at the beginning and definitely at the end of our um, lessons if, if possible. And then also definitely at the beginning and end of the unit. Um, he also recommends posting the scale and learning targets in the same place for students to have access to. Now, the example given was like somewhere on the board. Okay. Well, we don't have a board or like a anchor chart wall or anything like that in our, in our classrooms, our virtual classrooms. We could post it, post it like on our website or, um, in the note section of your course or whatever, you know, but you want them to have it during the lesson. So right now I'm taking just a snippet of the 3.0. And like just putting it on every slide uh, so that way it's a, that part of the leaf there now if i give them an opportunity to be a four like a like one that i design um and they have the opportunity to do that during like independent practice i put that there. i put the 4.0 there just so they know hey this is an opportunity to show me that you're a four um but yeah so that's what i'm doing now and it's taking up uh real estate on my on my slide now, depending on when you're watching this or listening to this, we might be in new row and new row has a note section that you can put, put notes in there and then broadcast them out to your students so they can see them throughout the entire lesson. That's where I plan on putting this scale 
in future lessons. Yes, I'll still have a slide like this where I can use the pointer tool and point it out and highlight things. But then um, when we move on, that that scale is going to be in in the notes section. So that way my kids can refer to it and I can refer to it during the lesson without taking up real estate on my slides. So that's the scale. And uh, like I said, the four, one, and zero can stay the same. They don't have to change. Um, and we and now we're talking about how to use it. So we've already kind of touched on that. So let's talk about it a little bit more. So um, although this is kind of understood, the scale is really to help you scaffold your students to at least a three. Okay, so your first lesson of your unit, you probably won't be teaching three skills. Make that known to your students. You know, say, we're starting this new unit. This is our end goal, but we're going to be here at 2.0 skills for the next week or the next couple of days. Um, so it's my hope that in the, by Friday, we'll all be at least a two. So that way we can move on to the three skills next week. Uh, that holds your students accountable. That holds you accountable. It holds everybody accountable. It also, what I love about this is that it's almost setting up like a yellow brick road for your students, right? So they know where they're supposed to be at the end of this or where they're supposed to be at the end of this lesson. Like if you did it that small, um, or that individualized per lesson, uh, that type of thing. And then the reason why Mardana wants these up everywhere during the entire lesson, I mean, not everywhere, but you know, they, he wants them shown or encourages to show them is so that way we can talk about them during every lesson um, or after specific activities because everything we do um, in that particular lesson should align to the learning target. And like I said, I'm teaching my kids how to paraphrase right now and they're going to make a presentation over something, um, whatever they want to do. And they have to write a summary paragraph of the main idea and supporting details in their own words. So right now I'm teaching them about using precise language. They have to have precise language in order to write this uh, nonfiction uh, summary paragraph over what they're wanting to present on. So we talk about that. Even when I'm like teaching about precise language, like, hey, our, our goal is to be able to write a summary paragraph, a main idea paragraph in our own words. Why is knowing how to use, identify and use precise language going to help you reach that goal? And we talk about that. Uh, something else that I do is I will put up a box, like I'll make a table on one of my slides of every kid that's invited to that class. And then I tell them to make a goal for that particular lesson or the unit, uh, just depending on what I'm doing. Um, they grab a box, put their name in it, and then type in their goal. And if there's time, you know, how, what are you going to do differently today to help you reach that goal? Now, there might be some students who are just extremely low and they're ex just going to be happy if they can get to a one. And if that's the case, I kind of know that, but I need them to put it on the board uh, somewhere. Like I wrote it down in my notebook or I sent you a private message or I'll send you an email or just, you know, I told my mom, just like something along that line to keep me account, keep them accountable, keep me accountable, uh, that type of thing. You could also put it in the chat box. They could put their goals in the chat box as well. The problem with that, that I found just depending on the class size is monitoring that. Uh, the boxes are nice because if I know that there's 20 kids, then you know, there should be 20 names in that, whose name is it in the box, that type of thing, whereas the chat box is a little harder to monitor that. Uh, but that is an option if that's something that you want. I'm like super accountable. Like I hold all my kids accountable. So like, oh, Jimmy, your name's not on the board. Where are you at? You have 20 more seconds to put your na uh, name on the board and your goal. Like I'll call them out. That's just who I am. So but I know not all teachers are like me and do things differently, but those are my ideas. So we set goals, uh, we describe how their actions contribute to those mastery of those of that goal. So after they do independent practice, I just take like a minute after going over the answers. Like, okay, so how did your actions help you reach your goal today? Or, or help you work towards your target, or learning target today? Uh, and then also at the end of a few lessons, not every lesson, I'll let them determine where they are at on the scale. 
And this is where I tell them what I tell you about being brave and taking a risk. And then I say, have fun. Like in every two minutes on my in my lessons, I'm like, all right, have fun and get quiet and let them work it out. But I don't always say that be brave and take a risk throughout the entire lesson. So this is where I'm really uh, purposeful in that. I'm like, okay, uh, we are going to rate ourselves today. And this isn't going in the grade book because this isn't like true data. You know, this is just me wondering what you think about yourself. Do you think you're a one? Do you think you're a two? Do you think you're a three or four or 2.5, whatever? And be brave because we're just starting out. We're not at the end of our lesson. I've only been teaching 2.5 skills at this point. We haven't moved up to three. Where are you at on this scale? And like I said, I'll let them um, put it in the chat box if they're too embarrassed. But that's just that's just what I will say when I do this part of the lesson. And like I said, I don't do it every lesson because my lessons are only 30 minutes. But I do let them read the scale and come up with a goal. And, and then we refer back to it throughout the lesson. Um, so that's, that's what I do, friends, in my, in my lessons with the scales. And I've seen a big difference with my kids. They get really competitive with themselves, not necessarily with others. They don't want to be a one. They don't want to be a zero. They want to be a four. And so I've had students kind of step up a little bit more than they have in the past because, they're, like I said, now there's a yellow brick road. Now there is a path. They can see that. They know how to evaluate themselves. They know how I'm evaluating them. They know that I'm providing activities to help reach that goal. And it's almost given new purpose to our class connects because they know they're not just something that um, they're just showing up to do. They now know what we're doing. <laughs> so, and that hasn't always been super clear. So I hope this helps. I hope this helps you. Again, get the book yourself because there's lots of like things to print off or copy or um, in this book. That's one reason why I really love it is that it's not just words. There's resources. There's examples. Uh, there's examples of what teachers can do to be because as you if you know this, um, if you use Marzana, you know, there's like a rating scale for teachers. Like you can be uh, developing, applying, or innovating in every one of these skills. And he gives examples on how you could be considered uh, like applying or innovating. So definitely get this book. It's going to help you be a stronger educator. It's helping me be a stronger educator. And hopefully this helps you. So come back uh, next time. Comment on, on, you know, in the teacher's lounge or... Uh, on Facebook or Instagram and your ideas and thoughts about all this because uh, we learn best from each other so I know I don't have all the answers and I'd love to hear your take and spend on these scales and how you use them in your classroom so I will see you all on Friday and then hope you'll join me next week on next Monday for a mini Monday PD thanks everyone bye <laughs>